Hello, everyone. I'm Bartholomew Bland, Executive Director of the Lehman College Art Gallery. Uh, and I'm very pleased today to be joined by Carlos Estevez, uh, who is uh, one of the artists in our exhibition, Sound Vision, Harmonious Relationships in Art and Music. Uh, and Carlos is actually represented by three works in the current exhibition, uh, Celestial Chamber Orchestra, 2015, um, uh, Soliloquy, 2012, and Circum Circumlocution, uh, also 2012 the images that you saw at the opening of our presentation. Um, Carlos, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure for me to be with you. It's wonderful to talk to you. Where am I talking to you from right now? Um, I am in my studio in Miami. Wonderful. I was thinking of a very tidy studio. I always wonder about that with artists, you know, the kinds of things they have. Uh, in process. Is that work behind you in process? That new? Yeah, that's that's uh, actually the work that I'm working in right now. Ah. And and by the way, it's, it's a compilation of objects, but it have a music box inside. I'll, oh, show, really? you, I'll show it to you later. The music goes through all of the, all of the yeah. way. Um, as we were talking before we started the presentation, uh, of course, because Lehman is uh, a teaching institution that offers a BFA and an MFA, I often like to ask artists about their early influences and how they or their artistic career got started. So I was wondering if you could tell me about the one of your earliest memories of work that made an artistic impact on you uh, when you were growing up. Do you remember? Well, I, I, I used to make drawing as every kid. Mm -hmm. And I like to make my own toys because I, I'm coming from Cuba yeah. and the situation, it, it was uh, very precarious mm -hmm. and we don't have toys. Uh, we have toys once a year. It's a long story, but uh, so I have to create my own toys mm -hmm. and because need is the mother of invention. Uh, when you lack of something, you have to create it yourself at the end it made like a incredible school because it developed a, a sense of invention and a sense of creativity. You have to look around, see what you have, see what you can do with what you have. So that um, machinery of transforming mm -hmm. things to see reality beyond what is in your eyes, see how things can become some, something else. That's, I think it was a, very important component of my education in, in Cuba. But also I started to study art 11 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, by destiny, I think, I went to a school. A friend of mine from my neighborhood uh, asked me if I want to join him for an art test. So mm -hmm. I went with him and I was, you know, no pressure. I, I was there for, with my friend. I did the test and I passed the test. And then I started to store the art. So that, was, so that would have been sort of in uh, the American equivalent of middle school. You would have been starting your uh, your art career, as it were. You had yeah, I was 11 years old. It was like, yeah, middle school. And then yeah. how much art were you given during the day? Was it just one art class during the day? Or was your whole curriculum dedicated to Yeah, art? it was like uh, academic classes, mathematics, physics, all, all this stuff in one session in the morning and the afternoon uh, art classes. But it was fantastic because uh, I didn't know anything about art. And at that time, it was a happy, the, the most happy time for the Cuban regime because uh, Cuba was supported by uh, European Eastern socialist country. And then it was a sort of economic stability and my teacher were the most prominent prof uh, artists at that, at that time. So I have the uh, classes, the academic uh, teaching, and, and also I got their experience as an artist. It was, I think it was a, it was a golden time for me and it opened a, a universe. Because I, I, once, once I discovered art, I, I got fascinated. I saw this is what's meant to be for me. That's wonderful. Um, I was recently talking to another artist who had started his career in Cuba, and he was talking about his education 
as being very, uh, that a lot of the professors he was having, a lot of the teachers had really come out of the social realist tradition from the Soviet Union. And that was a big influence that it was a very traditional sort of classical um, arts education. Were you uh, taught about the modernists or was it, or was it much more of a sort of traditional uh, arts education? Well, we have like a regular uh, classic academic training, like uh, drawing uh, still life or from you know, the, just from the to, to uh, um, approach to techniques, uh, watercolor, oil drawings. Um, but it was very flexible because those, uh, those uh, professors were artists and they were very young and uh, they have a lot of idea of contemporary. So they, they mainly concentrate, the focus of the program were, was create creativity. Mm. So mm. beside the academic, we have, we have the very emphasized uh, uh, focus on cre creation. Very interesting, very interesting. And so you would describe this as a golden period in your life. Were you getting the support at home? Was your family artistic or were they interested? Were they, were they pleased that you were studying art? Did they, uh, how was their approach to, to your artistic interest? Not at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at That's all. Very common. Common. But, you know, it's a very, uh, it's a very uh, narrow thinking Cuban society. So an artist, uh, it doesn't sound very good for, to my father and um, my family was not very happy with that because you know an artist what, what does an artist do this is i realize now that it's a very difficult career yes. uh, but it's very important i mean what it would be a human life what it would be humanity without art so i you know i discovered my passion and at some point they uh, they realized that I really, I was really interested in what I was studying. My father is an engineer, so I think for some years he had the idea that I was going to use, I was going to become an engineer or an architect, and I was going to use my, my skill from art in, in engineering. And, I, and somehow I did, but I did the opposite. I did the opposite. Okay. I used uh, all the engineer. I'm very interested in, in machineries and in structures, as you can and see in my work. Yes, the mechanical. Yeah, so it resulted the, the opposite that my father was expecting. But I think right now, time passed, and I notice I have a career, and they are quite happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and can you tell us a little bit about one of the exceptional teachers you might have had, uh, one of your art teachers in particular that stands out um, that might have made a big impact on you. Well, I, I have, this, this is not, it was not only a golden time for me, it was a golden time for Cuban cultural artistic scenery. Mm. And those artists like Juan Francisco Elso, which is gonna have a show in New York at the Museo del Barrio, uh, very soon. I think it's one of the icons of the art in, in, in Cuba. I have a, uh, Jose Bedia, Consuelo Castañeda, Rubén Torres Yorca, every, every single uh, contemporary artist of the avant-garde in Cuba were teaching and I had this privilege to have the, the teaching from them. Very interesting. And did you have that sense when you were still an adolescent, when you were still a teenager, that you were going to become a professional artist? I mean, was that very much what you were being trained for? Um, so how did you perceive yourself going on when you graduated, uh, what your next step would be? Well, when, you know, when I was a student, I was 11 years old. Mm. So um, 11 years old boy liked to play. So I was playing all the time, not conscious of what uh, the important role of art in society. I didn't, I, I didn't think of that. I just uh, was concentrated in the process, enjoying the process, seeing that I still doing. And also I think it's a very important component of an artist in psychological way, the child that we have inside, because child have this capacity of fascination. And for somehow, the child that I have inside survived and still, so I, I consider myself uh, a child with the dress of the adult, so. Oh, yeah, that's good. 
<laughs> but as you were, I mean, you started at 11, presumably you did five or six years. When you were coming close to graduation, uh, did you do, what did you imagine your career was going to look like? Did you think you would become an illustrator? Did you think you'd become a sculptor? Did you, uh, were you going to be employed by the government? Did you think you'd become an art teacher? Well, I studied 14 years, three years elementary, four years in the academy, and five years in the high institute of art. So 14 years total. Uh, I didn't have any idea what I was gonna do. Uh, fortunately, because it's you some sometimes it, it's like uh, walking in the rope, in yeah. the rope, in the, the, like the circus. Yeah. yeah, and an artist's career is very. Uh, uncertain you don't know what is going to come next so uh i was very lucky that i was hired by by a center of visual art mm -hmm. and then i started like a curator or I, I don't know i didn't have a very clear work job to do but uh they hired me and i was there for a few months until this uh, well-known collector peter lubitz for germany mm -hmm. uh have this uh, Museum in, in Aachen and in Colon, Colony. Uh, and he was interested in my work. He bought some of my pieces and I made enough money to dedicate me, dedicate my time and my early full time to art. And mm -hmm. that's that's what I've been doing ever since. And were you were you living in Havana when you had that breakthrough? Uh, when he when you first got this first collector who was interested in your work? Yeah, I was living in Havana. Uh, I was born in Old Havana. Uh, and I lived in, Hab in old Havana my, my entire life until I left uh, 35 years old. And you were 35 years old, okay. Um, yeah. And did you, uh, what were the circumstances around you leaving? Were, were you really eager to pursue art in the States or was it the political situation um, or? Uh, well, that's, that's a very interesting and complex question because I started to travel in 1995, doing artists in residency program, doing exhibition, biennials internationally. And I realized it was a big difference between living in Cuba and living outside Cuba. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when I was in Cuba, I watched movies of the art of war and I, I saw I was, I was watching fiction. I mean, I couldn't explain how it was to live outside Cuba. But when I went out, I realized I was living in a fiction. I mean, Cuba is a completely surreal world. It doesn't, anything make sense. You just, you just have to live there and you have to follow what is coming in the daily life. It's very complex. It's, it's hard to explain, but it is like a surreal, it's another planet. It's not an island, it's, it's another planet. So uh, I start to travel and I think you have a, your body and your soul. And when I did this residency, I took my body and my soul, but at some point my soul started to, to stay behind. And it was any, any back and forth, it was difficult for me to adaptate to, to work in Cuba. Because when you, it, it's like you are a runner and you run on the rock. And you know, if you don't know anything better than that, but when you go to the field, a synthetic field that it may, nice to your feet you you know when you go back it's hard yeah so i have to get depressed and and at some point i think my my soul uh let me and <laughs> stay some someplace else and also i have my family and it was difficult for me doing artist residency and uh, going back to my family stay away for three four months mm -hmm. so i got this residence in paris at the cité international des arts for a year and we decided to go all together and experience the real world. And we like it a lot. And we, we decided to stay out of Cuba. Okay. So that was, uh, and um, uh, so what do you do career-wise when you were transitioning in, in, uh, in the United States? Were you looking for gallery representation? Um, were you doing a series of residencies? I had a lot of, I have a network that I did from Cuba because Cuba as a political uh, country, I mean, it's very unusual, uh, uh, the totalitarian regime and how people live. It's, it's so from outside, it's a curiosity. So people want to go and all the biennial, they're very international. 
-hmm. and I make an, a network. I have galleries in the in, in United States, in Japan, in Europe. So when I left, I already had this uh, network. Mm -hmm. So that was something you had sort of laid the groundwork for your career. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. That's wonderful. Um, uh, and so, uh, it's, I think it's, we should bring in the music aspect a little bit of what role has music played in your life generally? Were you a musical child or uh, were, were you uh, listening to music constantly in your home? I think, well, you know, I think music is the most incredible of the art mm -hmm. a manifestation because it's uh, abstract and it's very powerful, realistic. How music can, it's like a time machine. You, you can li be listened to Bach mm -hmm. and you don't know the circumstances of, of where Bach created a specific piece, but you get the feelings, you get the emotional landscape. And, and I think it's wonderful. So since I started to study art, I had this education from my teacher about music, about classic music, about jazz, about rock, uh, so uh, from from the very beginning, I realized how important music is in in, in every human life. And for me, particularly, I work with music. I listen to music all the time. It, it's an experience that every human should have. Yes, absolutely. It's, uh, and it's certainly tra trend. I think one of the most powerful things is it transcends language. You know, uh, like visual art in some way. You don't know. You don't need to be fluent in a particular language to gain the meaning, the emotion out of music. Um, in the same way that visual art transcends different languages. Uh, and so I think that they share that kind of. Uh, they show that kind of relationship. One of the things I've noticed about the pieces that you have in uh, the show and also other examples of your work is the merging of the musical instrument with the human form. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that influence and inspiration. Well, I think musical instruments itself are beautiful. I They're very sculptoric. Mm -hmm. They have each, they have a personality, they have a language. So for me, uh, I, I, for me, that there is every instrument is, is, one, is one being, is one character. Mm -hmm. And it's fascinating when you go to the concert and you see the relationship between the person who's played, the musician and the instrument that mainly when, when, I, when I'm watching a concert, it's like a, they became one. And it's incredible how different people, different personalities, different characters, in one moment, it became sublime, it became magic. They became one uh, playing a symphony, everybody at the same time playing different roles. It, it's, it's amazing. And that's not counting with the, the, the public, that it's like a, they are in the spaceship traveling in the universe, listen to the music. Everybody in their own dreams, their own uh, brain, having the same spirit and at the same time. I think that's a, that's a magical uh, uh, phenomenon. It is, it's interesting you talk about the, um, the, the beauty of the musical instrument. I think a lot about William Hogarth and his line of beauty, the S curve as being a, you know, an incredibly beautiful, the sinuous line of so many of those musical instruments um, uh, that you're able to sort of bring out. I, I think that's a, a fascinating um, a fascinating idea, particularly the stringed instruments that you use, the cellos, the violins, uh, the curve of a woman's body, uh, the female body. Uh, do you, are there art historical examples of that that you were particularly interested in or? Well, you know, there, there is this uh, viola de gamba, that yep. you have this this head, so the, I think that the uh, the instrument, the, the musical instrument, they are very evocative. And so, I mean, before they you start to play the music, mm -hmm. they 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 already speak themselves. When you see a flute or you see a clarinet, all these elements, when you just look look at it, it, it speak to me somehow. Thank and you. also, I related with a, some some sort of a mind mechanisms like a soliloquy or circunloquy there is different different uh, kind of dialogue of conversations 
very interesting. Do you have, um, uh, where, can you tell me a little bit about your process for some of the works that you have in the show? How do you go about sort of uh, visualizing what you're going to do? What, take, take us through a little bit step by step how you uh, create some of the sculptural works in particular. Uh, that you well, have. first, let me tell you that mostly people think that uh, art, artists are blessed. It's not, it's a, it's a curse. Mm. So <laughs> I have in my mind all this idea and they don't let me leave if I don't make it come true. So I have to, I have to do art because I really need it. I, I don't have a space in my mind to uh, storage all these ideas. Mm. So I go to the concert, for instance, and I, I listen to the music. And at the same time that I enjoy the, the concert, my brain is processing what I'm going to do with that because it's, it's something memorable. I want to be part of that. So I, somehow my brain gave me an answer that could be an, a sculpture, it could be a painting. So that's, that's how it works. It, it's very mysterious, it's very difficult to intellectualize the process because you don't know what is happening in the, in the brain, mm. how, how an experience, uh, how an idea became an image, but it's happened. It's like a bending machine. You get the emotion, the information from reality, the connection between the artist and, and the, the experience and, and you got you got an idea. So I, when I got an idea, I I have a lot of notebooks. So I took notes about what is this about and I start to elaborate. And then the physical, what about the physical production? I mean, are you sourcing? Do you have a, a large, um, uh, a large, I mean, we're in your studio now, I know, but uh, the, do you have a large um, sur a supply of parts that you might bring in to work? Do you have uh, bits of musical instruments? Do you, uh, what, when you're making this kind of assemblage, where are you drawing that material from? Well, I do have a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so um, I collect everything. Since, that, since I was a, a kid, I remember my grandfather hang, hang in me, take me for the hands and, and me try to, to grab something from the floor because I was, I was having this uh, app in my brain of observing and things that I like, I take. So I go to flea market, I go to antique store, I, 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 I am an eBay searcher, every, every place where uh, I can find treasures. And sometimes I don't know what to do with that, but uh, I have the... You're holding the work in case you the holding. The yeah, I, I have a sensor have a that it tells me this is this is speak to me. I'm gonna use it at some point, and mostly the time I do. I have a lot of things that I haven't used, probably uh, uh, things that I, I will not use in in my entire life. But I wanna I wanna possess it anyway. I I want to have it. So when I saw an instrument. For instance, I saw a clarinet and it, it resembled for me a, a, a human body, a, a woman body. And, and then I took it and I, I made that uh, soliloquy piece. Very interesting. Very yeah, interesting. because there is a canvas and also there is a, a sculpture. Because sometimes yeah. I, I like to see how the message, the idea I reflected with different mediums. So I try to- so Do you often repeat series sort of doing a, a two-dimensional and then a three-dimensional form of the, of the work? Because sometimes you have an idea and I can do representative and be dimensional, but uh, sometimes I like, to, I like to see how it looks with a real audience. So I, I do both at the same time. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, what are some of the, who are some of the artists who've had a big influence on you uh, in your work that you particularly admire? Well, uh, you know, there are certain things in life that you do and you, you recognize that that's the, the top and that's like a release because it's like, a, well, I can die anytime and I see the best show of my life. That mm. was the, that was the Bosch, your only Bosch in, in the Prado Museum. It was for his 500th anniversary. You saw uh, that show, I was sorry I didn't get to see that. That was uh, that, that was the best by far. I mean, I had the certainty that there is not gonna be another show better than that. Um, so I seen the worst, the worst are the best, <laughs> but that one, yes, that was, one was the best. Uh, and you know, uh, so I, 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 
you have to make a big line, a reservation and everything, but it was worth it because this pain, his painting, it was so mesmerized. It was magical. It was like a movie. It's incredible how many images and people were like a hypnot hypnotizer in front of the painting. So well, I see that he is one of my mind. Yes, and I can see the when you said Hieronymus Bosch, I can see the relationship. A lot of his figures that have been um, transmuted into other things or have different body parts that are different uh, different things. So I can see that relationship in some of the musical instruments that you transformed into uh, into figures. That's that's very interesting. Yeah. Um, I, well, and, and finally, a, a, a last question for you. I'm wondering about what you're working on right now. Uh, what, what, what do you see uh, coming out of 2021 in terms of your artistic production? Well, it's interesting because uh, every artist is uh, individual and we reflect reality in many different ways. And when all this situation with the COVID started, the pandemic, everybody get isolated and I started to do a big uh, installation, interactive installation of tarot cards. I'm fascinated tarot about cards. interesting. I'm fascinated about tarot cards because uh, I think there is like a psychological compendium of the human brain. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing like a universe which is uh, an inventory of human symbols mm -hmm. and it's going to be like a like a big cosmos every every single car have a number and people can make the reading uh, i give the viewers a diagram with a, the uh, with a graphic of what he's uh, facing and then you take uh, the number from from a head that have a number in the head, and then you do your own constellation of your life. Huh? And I think you know that's life. Human life is uh, is pretty much about meanings. I mean, what it means to you, what you have, your family, your friends, what you do, your daily life. That's what you are. So everything has a meaning and. That's, that's the, the, the piece that I was doing when, when the COVID start. And right now I'm working in, in that piece on the, on the background, oh. which is called the, the Soul Encounters. And it's about how, how much human energy and information is in reflected in objects and how the objects means, made. So I'm creating this uh, cabinet which a lot of objects that I've been collecting, like, like the lady have a dress with tin type photograph. Mm. It's hard to see from here. Uh, I wanted to show you the, the music yeah. box. Uh, this is uh, a beautiful one. Wonderful. Yeah, so the music is always uh, a component. That's Oh, that's that's charming. That's that's wonderful. Yeah. Where, so, where, did you, where did you find the box? Oh, I, I bought it in an antique in antique place. It's a one thing. Well, that's yeah. a wonderful that's a wonderful story. And I hope that I get to see your interactive tarot card piece. Uh, I, I wish us all you and all of us a good future. So a good fortune. Uh, thank yeah. you for talking to me today. I really oh, appreciate thank it. you. Thank you. A pleasure talking to you. It's a pleasure, Carlos. I hope to see you soon. Bye -bye. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>